Twilight of the Gods ending is centered around the battle between Thor's army, Sigrid's band of misfits, and the Vanni. The reason for this war is Sigrid's efforts to avenge her family, who were slaughtered on the day of her wedding with Leif. Sigrid obviously can't win on her own, hence she assembles a team who can help her get into Asgard so that she can kill the god of the thunder. Loki seemingly hangs around and nudges Sigrid and her gang in the right directions because he just loves to see his brother and his father face the wrath of a few determined mortals. But eventually, it becomes clear that Loki's motivations are quite complex, and the goal that he has in mind is pretty catastrophic. And although he can kill Thor with the flick of his finger, he is using Sigrid and her team to send a broader message about the vulnerability of the gods. I know that that sounds straightforward, but the way Loki goes about it is really intriguing and confusing. So let's get right to it. Spoiler alert. On the day Loki's giant wife Angerboda gave birth to Hel and Loki started to form a family by bringing in Fenrir and Jormungandir, Thor arrived out of nowhere to punish all of them. Asgardians apparently had this rule that they couldn't fornicate with the giants and Thor was there to enforce that rule. Loki had to forfeit all his children. Hel was sent to the underworld, Fenrir was put in chains and imprisoned in Asgard and Jormungandir was bashed across a stone and thrown into the river. Now all of that is reason enough for Loki to go against Thor and end him along with his allies. But then things get a little complicated. Several years after this incident, Jormungandir apparently caused a massive tsunami since she was a shape-shifting sea serpent so that the passengers aboard a boat would call to Thor. That gave Jormungandir the opportunity to seduce Thor and bear his seed. The reason she needed to do this was because According to the prophecy, Thor bedding his niece would begin the process of Ragnarok, that is, the death of all gods and the destruction of Asgard. With Asgard and its gods gone, Loki's children would finally be free. But then Loki thought that just starting the process of Ragnarok wouldn't cut it, because it would end with the death of one of his children, Jormungandir, at the hands of Thor. He had to go a step further and not only ensure the death of Thor, but also guarantee the irrelevance of the gods. That's why when Thor destroyed Sigrid's family while searching for Loki, the god of mischief recruited Sigrid to kill Thor. If a mortal like Sigrid killed Thor and the word of that act spread amongst the followers of the Norse gods, then they would stop believing in them. If the prayer stopped, the gods would be robbed of their powers, and the gods being stripped of their powers would give Loki a chance to craft a future where all his children would thrive. Yes, Loki does have regrets about whatever happened between Yorga Mandir and Thor, but since it was prophesized, I guess it was unavoidable. But he doesn't allow his decisions to be defined by his regret. Instead, he is motivated by the preservation of his family's future. I hope that makes sense. The battle between Thor his army the Vanir, Sigrid and her team is a bloody one. Tewaz ends up biting the dust on the battlefield. Sif, Thor's wife, is aware of the fact that nobody wants to see Thor alive because of everything he has done. But she underscores the environmental aspects of the god's existence. Sif is the goddess of harvest and if Thor dies, there won't be rain and then her powers will cease to exist. Baldur, Thor's brother says that Thor deserves to die at the hands of Sigrid. However, when Sif tells him to protect Thor for the sake of the rules that keep the planet functional, Baldur agrees to aid Thor. Back on the battlefield, Loki is grievously injured. Wolfert dies protecting Sigrid, Harver meets a similar fate, and while all the deaths are super sad, Harver's passing is particularly tragic because she wanted to die and go to Valhalla to reunite with her children. But since she took the cursed weapon from Andvari's armory, she is destined to go to hell, thereby preventing her from meeting her children ever again. Sigrid makes an impassioned plea to the Valkyries on Harver's behalf, but she only gets the attention of hell. 
Thor and Sandraudiga give Sigrid the opportunity to accept defeat and go back home. But she rejects this pity party and launches one final attack on Thor. When Thor learns of Sigrid's true name, he realizes that this woman is alive because of Baldur's mercy and he reprimands his brother for lying to him. While all this is going on, Sigrid chucks her spear at Thor. However, Baldur takes the spear to his chest to save Thor. This causes Thor to become livid and he charges at Sigrid with all his might. Thankfully, Freya interjects and takes Thor to Valhalla. This sequence of events is a tad confusing. According to my theory, Baldur knew that there was no way to actually kill Thor and everyone's efforts to kill his brother would only lead to more and more death and destruction. Baldur wanted to inject some humanity into Thor and that is probably why he chose to sacrifice himself instead of, you know, stopping the spear with his two godly hands. That did make Thor emotionally vulnerable, something that he hasn't shown throughout the course of Twilight of the Gods. But it didn't stop his wrath. Freya chooses to be compassionate towards Thor, even though Thor had killed her brother Tewaz because if someone like Freya could show empathy under those circumstances, then Thor could be compelled to pipe down a bit too. Anyway, all this family drama prevents Sigrid and Loki from killing Thor for good. While the battle between Thor and Sigrid is going on, Odin is busy seeing his future with the help of the side corner. Given how side Kona's soothsaying powers come from Freya, she tells Odin to ask Freya directly. But Odin says that Freya's powers to look into the future resides in the side Kona itself. So there's no point in troubling Freya. The side Kona tells Odin that whatever he seeks will come at a heavy price. Odin doesn't pay heed to side Kona's warnings and commands her to do whatever she needs to do to tell him his future. The side Kona grabs hold of one of Odin's ravens, memory, and bites into its belly to expose its entrails. Side Kona uses the intestines of any and every living being to wield her powers. Since Odin's guts can't be used, he is forced to sacrifice memory. This shocks Odin. But hey, he gets to look into the future. Therefore, it is a lose-win situation. Anyway, Odin sees Thor getting impaled by Sigrid. Then, he sees Thor getting eaten by Jormungandir. After that, he sees Fenrir standing on the horizon of Asgard, I guess. Last but not the least, Odin watches the religion of the Norse gods being replaced by Christianity. Jesus Christ literally shows up. Because is it really a Zack Snyder project if it doesn't have some Christ imagery? Odin doesn't take this very well and he slaughters the side corner. On top of that, he starts to lose his memory because, well, memory has been killed by the side corner, which seemingly causes him to lose his sanity. He just remembers the part that Asgard and its gods are doomed. They will be rejected by the people and replaced by a new religion. That said, instead of acting on what he has seen, Odin takes Memory's body and vanishes into thin air along with thought. Egil climbs up to Odin's tower only to see the love of his life lying in a pool of water, blood and guts. She doesn't die because her magic uses her entrails to fuse her persona with that of memory, thereby creating someone entirely new. The side Kona remembers bits and parts of her time with Egil, but since she is in the middle of the process of evolution, she is unable to be herself entirely. Freya shows up to take the side Kona and Egil to safety so that they can rebuild their newly formed relationship from scratch. Now, if Twilight of the Gods gets greenlit for a second season, I guess we'll get to see Odin wrestling with the knowledge of Asgard's doom and the death of the Norse gods. Whether or not he'll be able to do anything about it, because he isn't of sound mind, will probably form the crux of his character's arc. Also, he'll have to look out for a vengeful side corner and Egil, who'll probably be looking to get back at Odin for trying to kill the side corner. If the lovers decide to put this incident in the rear view mirror, then Odin can go about his day without worrying about them. When Freya takes Thor to Valhalla, Sigrid expresses her anger because she still thinks she had a shot at killing the god of thunder. Loki gives Sigrid another chance to kill Thor by killing her. A Valkyrie arrives on the battlefield and takes Sigrid 
Cedric to Valhalla to meet Thor. Yes, this moment is a bit confusing because technically Sigrid should have gone to hell after dying on the battlefield because like Harvor, she also had one of Anvari's weapons. That said, in the first episode, a Valkyrie had taken interest in her because of her courage and spirit. So maybe the Valkyrie's love for Sigrid cancelled out the curse of Anvari's weapon and allowed her to go to Valhalla. By the way, this is just my speculation and it isn't explained in the show itself. At the end of Twilight of the Gods season 1, when Sigrid wakes up in Valhalla, Thor shows up and says something really cryptic. He says that he has been wet nursed against his will and that they, both Sigrid and Thor, have been manipulated by other people. But now that they are under the same roof, they can hash out the differences and script the song of Sigrid. Now, by wet nursed, I guess Thor is referring to the fact that Baldur and Frey have tried to inject some empathy into him so that he doesn't act like an animal all the time. I don't exactly know why he says that he has been manipulated. Is he referring to the genesis of Ragnarok by having sex with Jormungandr? Who the hell manipulated him to do that? He did that because he wanted to. Am I supposed to believe that if Thor knew about what would happen if he had intercourse with his niece, he would have stayed away from her? I don't think so. I think that Thor is just trying to sound relatable to Sigrid and arrive at a truce with her. Based on Sigrid's clenched fist, I don't think Thor's nonsense is going to work on her. If Netflix allows Zack Snyder and his team to make a second season of Twilight of the Gods, I guess we'll see Sigrid continuing her quest to find a way to kill the God of Thunder and avenge her family's demise. If Sigrid succeeds in a roundabout way, Loki will end up getting his revenge on Thor. But I don't think Loki will be putting all his trust in Sigrid and sitting idly. The throne of Asgard is empty. Thor is gone and so is Freya. Baldur is dead. So it's possible that Loki will take control of Asgard, free his children and start remaking the world in his vision. However, these are just my theories. If you have any thoughts and opinions regarding what you want to see in Twilight of the Gods Season 2, then let us know in the comment section.